Hello, everyone, and welcome to The New Normal, one of six shows produced by university students around the world. I'm Megan Larson. And I'm Caitlin Karastiankova. We're your hosts from Ryerson University in Toronto, Canada. I'm Laura Sylvain, along with Monir Fouri. We're from Tel Aviv University in Israel. I am Laura Bento with Tamiris Carvalho from Merorista University in São Bernardo do Campo, Brazil. I'm Galango, along with Tara Ip from Hong Kong Baptist University. As you can see, we're all at home because of the COVID-19 outbreak, like many people around the world. Usually, we all be in the studios at our universities, but instead, we are using Zoom to produce this show. Our show is about how people our age around the world are adjusting to our new reality. So let's get started. In Toronto and all of Canada, like almost all places on the planet, life as we know it has come to a standstill. All non-essential businesses in Canada are closed and everyone has been advised to stay home. What's it like in Israel, Noah? Well, in Israel, almost everything is closed. We can't go to the beach or to parks. You are not supposed to go out for anything that is not essential. In Hong Kong, our lives are to get, are to get back to normal. Public libraries and restaurants are open now. McDonald's, for example, have resumed dine-in services, but wearing a mask and, get tum and getting tum body temperature tested are still required. But the uh, government in Hong Kong has launched a new law. Not more than four people can get together at the same time. In Toronto, it's five people allowed to gather together. So that means bars and restaurants are closed. You can't have a wedding. And sadly, there are no funerals allowed right now for the people dying from the virus. And here in Sao Paulo, basically, all the shopping malls are closed. Only the essential businesses are open. And even some roads are being closed down. Since most sport events are cancelled and most sport facilities are closed, some people are finding a new way to stay fit at home. Samuel Mo has the story. This children's playground and this gym at a private estate in Yunnan in the northern part of Hong Kong has been closed since February. The Hong Kong government has limited public gatherings to no more than four people at a time. 為了防止病毒的散播,我們刪了全部會所的設施和加強了公共地方的清潔。So, Harry Jern, who is too shy to show his face, has turned to exercising in front of his TV screen. He has been stuck at home for three months. The price of Wing Fit has more than doubled from $600 to $2,000 in recent weeks because of the increasing demand. The Physical Education Department at Hong Kong Baptist University, meanwhile, has produced this video on how to exercise within very limited space. Many students are now confined to small apartments with their entire families. The Department of Health, meanwhile, has come up with the Moscow Lazy Lion. His goal, get people moving. New cases of COVID-19 in Hong Kong has dropped to single digits in recent days. But there's no word yet when the social distancing will end. Canadians are definitely missing our national pastime right now. Hockey! In the United States, they're saying many of the big sporting events may be shut down until 2022. It's not fun missing those kinds of events, but also it's boring being stuck inside alone or with just a few family members. I just had my 19th birthday and I couldn't leave my house or have a party in my house. Because of that, I didn't expect much, just doing basically nothing, maybe with some music like this. But actually, it was more than I expected. I'm really thankful that my family was there. There was even cake, and I must say, what a cake, one of the best I did. Chocolate milk, mousse, and milk flavor, I really recommend it. Usually my family and friends go to some fancy restaurant in Sao Paulo. We had even planned to reach one, but then Corona came. So instead we made a Skype call and even sang happy birthday. Definitely a birthday that I won't forget. I definitely relate to that. I had my 22nd birthday at home with my family this year. And I honestly didn't get to go out to a restaurant with them either. But they got me a little cake and we just celebrated at home. It was really nice. 
that's so sad. Well, everything about our lives has changed from having online birthday, birthday parties to attending school online to not being able to shop or eat out. Places of worship such as churches, monks and temples have also been closed in many countries around the world. Here in Hong Kong, temples are open and I know that in South Korea, churches are open. In the United States, there's been a controversy as some large evangelical churches have refused to shut down and continue to hold services with huge crowds. It's crazy. This is a time of year when Christians, Muslims, and Jews have major religious celebrations. All of us have been affected by the fact that we must stay home. Recently, Passover was celebrated. It's a very important holiday for the Jewish people. It is a time when all families and friends gather together around a dinner called Seda, where they pray their gratefulness for the miracles that delivered their ancestors from slavery in Egypt. But this year, Israel's prime minister announced a lockdown during the Seda night until the next morning. Some family used video conferences to spend the night together, but religious people couldn't use digital devices during the holiday, and sadly, they had to spend it alone. Here's a video produced by Munir showing a bit of a price of our Seda. Those videos are always so cool to see. I know there was like a bunch of people singing on their balcony in Italy, and I just love seeing people come together and being so resilient and happy be during this time. I and love the, the community. World, of Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I love the community around it that's created in the worst of times. You know, people find a way to come together to celebrate anyway, even if it's from a distance. Yeah, and around the world, lots of Muslims are also affected by the change in Ramadan. Our classmate Frida shared how her family is adopting during this time. Ramadan is a holiday celebrated by all Muslims all around the world. It's mostly about being with your family and your loved ones and breaking your fast when the time comes. Usually we fast from sunrise uh, to sunset. And to me, uh, my favorite part is just breaking my fast with my family and having a really, really delicious meal. So while I'm talking to you guys, I actually have something in the oven. I will be um, breaking my fast with my best friend Grace. Hello! Hi! And here in Brazil, this is how Catholic Easter was celebrated near where I live and some photographs of how church is helping those in need. And you're seeing how a student church and a local church were celebrating Easter in Brazil. In Toronto, some bakeries got creative, sharing Easter recipes on Instagram for families to make their goodies from home. Lots of places like this bakery are preparing and delivering meals. It's helping them stay in business while so many places are having to shut down. You are watching The New Normal, produced by students in Canada, Brazil, Hong Kong, and Israel. We are producing six shows like this one, look at different issues related to COVID-19 and how it's affecting our generation. Something else that's been affected by physical distancing is relationships. How have you guys been affected? Well, for me personally, a lot of my family lives in France. So I know I won't be able to see them until September because you can't fly. So I think it's very sad, but we are still catching up on Zoom, Skype and everything. Yeah, luckily I live a bit closer to my grandparents, but you know, unfortunately you can't really see them in person or go and visit. So what my grandparents have done, they live 10 minutes away is drive over and say hello from <laughs> two meters away. And we talk from a distance across the driveway. I can't go and give them a hug, but at least we get to catch up that way and see each other's faces. Well, for me, my little brother just came back from, from UK, so he's doing self-quarantine right now. So I also don't get to see him. And even though we're in the same house, we're, we're in our own room. So uh, we have to do FaceTiming even though we're under the same roof. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Clara. My brother, uh, he's still working on the front lines in a grocery store. And so even though we're in the same house, we have to keep our distance because I'm immunosuppressed. So I'm kind of in my room and then he's downstairs. And anytime he comes home, we bleach the floors after him and send him downstairs away from the rest of the family. And here where I live, I have a few friends who just started a relationship or were in a relationship. And they one of my friends this is a blonde girl 
she moved in with her boyfriend during this quarantine. And my other friend hit a one month anniversary with her boyfriend just before the quarantine, but now she can't see him. The really hard time for those who are separated. Yeah, I can't see my boyfriend either. We've been talking on FaceTime every day, but again, I just want to give him a hug like I want to give my grandparents a hug, but it's hard when you can't see each other in person. Well, modern times. My classmate Or Moscovich talked to some Tel Aviv University students about their online relationships. Since the coronavirus outbreak, the lives of my generation has changed significantly, but the romantic aspect was left out for most news magazines. I am Or from Tel Aviv University, and today we will discover how relationships were affected by the pressure of COVID-19. And how will the same girls will meet new people now when they can't leave the house? Hi, Or. Hi. Is there still any hope for dating during COVID-19? It's more digital because you cannot meet people face to face, so you have to do everything online. There's a digital hope. I haven't seen my boyfriend since like, I think three weeks or a month. Um, we actually don't do a lot um, during quarantine, I guess, binging TV shows on Netflix. So Netflix and chill. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I miss him all the time. Let's start with that. I miss go traveling together. We really like traveling, go see new places. I miss our jokes, laughs. What is the closest thing to a date you had since the pandemic outbreak? I would say I had a kind of a video chat for like two hours with the person and uh, we drank wine at the same time. So it kind of almost felt like a date. I guess he didn't uh, came up to your place afterwards. No, sadly not. What I think um, we did learn during quarantine is how to live together. Every time he comes to visit in Israel, then we're spending a lot of time to like, you know, take advantage of the time that we have. But now it's like we spent a lot more time together and we're like almost living together. So you get to like know and understand all the little stuff. Do you feel the distance brought you closer to each other, maybe? I think the distance makes us understand how much we value each other and how much happy we are to have each other. A lot of things were cancelled and will be cancelled. Like, nothing goes away, everything is postponed and will just happen later. So we're just gonna wait a few months. We're gonna come back to the normal life we had before. It, it is a great advantage for our relationship to have the chance of being together um not just through the phone even when we're not together physically it just makes me smile and make me laugh it's kind of a make up for that do you have any tips for meeting new people during quarantine i would just say be more patient because if you meet people you're gonna have to wait a bit before you can actually meet them in real life. You will have more conversations with the person before you're gonna meet him. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's even good. Like love is blind. Love is blind, yes. And have you tried violating quarantine in order to see each other? I would rather not answer that. <sighs> Thanks to everyone who took part in this item. Back to you. So dating is pretty tricky right now. <laughs> Uh, but on the other hand, meeting people has somehow become a lot easier. Uh, Tinder actually made it settings global so you can meet people from around the world. I saw this story about a guy who used his drone to get a girl's attention. He couldn't meet her in person because of self-isolation. So have a look at what he did instead. I looked out my window and saw this girl dancing, perhaps to a TikTok song. I needed to say hi to her, so I waved out on my balcony. She waved back. I grabbed my tape, pen, drone, and paper. Then I wrote down my digits and sealed it on my drone. Flirting is normally daunting for me, but since I've been quarantined in my apartment for a week now, I was craving some social interaction. 2020 has been off to a terrible start, but I still needed to shoot my shot. She picked up my drone and I guess it worked because I got a text from her an hour later. That's quite a neat way to get someone's number to fade away. Not only are people everyday relationships changing, but so are all the things that entertain us. Many talk shows hosts have converted their shows to YouTube production. I've heard that uh, DJ D-Nice is producing Instagram lives and spinning his own tracks. One Saturday, it even went on for nine hours. Wow. So yes, I've seen quite a few people in the entertainment industry resorting in 
resorting to Instagram Live to produce content, or even just connect with their fans. Noah has an interview of how one actress is dealing with this recent outbreak. Yes, Gila Almagor is an award-winning Israel actress whose film won multiple awards at important film festivals. She has been acting at Abima, Israel's national theater, for 64 years. Our friend Sophie interviewed her about the impact of the virus on the entertainment industry. Shalom, Gila, what's your name? I'm in the Seger Gamur. Yes, thank you. כבר מתחילים להתרגל למצב הלא נורמלי הזה. את ו... אחת מהשחקניות הבולטות ביותר של תיאטרון הבימה, התיאטרון הלאומי של ישראל, כן. ואת כבר בלי עבודה הרבה מאוד שבועות. כן, מאז, מאז ששלחו את כולנו לחופשה ללא תשלום, ואיש לא רואה את האופק ואיש לא יודע מתי זה ייגמר. כי דבר אחד ברור לי, שהתיאטרון והתרבות בכלל, Uh, היא תהיה, יש לי הרגשה שהיא תהיה האחרונה בשרשרת המזון שתחזור לה, uh, לשגרה כלשהי, משום שאנשים uh, לדעתי יפחדו uh, לשבת בחברות הגדולה, uh, לתיאטראות לא יהיה כסף uh, לעשות הצגות uh, מסוימות. Uh, אני חושבת שיתמקדו יותר בהצגות מאוד מאוד קטנות ובאולמות מאוד קטנים. ואנשים לדעתי ישבו, וזה יהיה סוריאליסטי עם מסכות באולמות, והצגות שתהיינה לקהל מאוד מצומצם, וכל ההתגייסות נראית לי תהיה אחרת, לפחות בשלב הראשון, שזה יכול להיות גם אולי בעוד חצי שנה, אולי אפילו בעוד שנה. זה, זה לא מבשר טוב. ואיך את כשחקנית שבעצם עובדת... נון סטופ, שישים וכמה שנים בתיאטרון, נכון. וגם בטלוויזיה, וגם בקולנוע. איך את מתמודדת פתאום עם הפוגה מוחלטת בכל תעשיית הבידור? זה קשה מאוד. הרוגע הזה שנכפה עליי, הוא לא טוב לי. כמו שאת אמרת, אני רגילה לעבוד, אני טורבו, אני רגילה לעבוד מסביב לשעון, וגם כשאני לא עובדת בתיאטרון, יש לי את קרן המשאלות של גילה אלמגור. ויש לי פעילויות, ואני יוצאת להרצאות, ואני עושה טלוויזיה, ואני עושה קצת קולנוע, ואני עושה איפה שרק אני יכולה, ופתאום נאדה, כלום. כן, גילה, תודה רבה לך על הרעיון הזה, ואני מקווה שיהיו ימים טובים ובריאים יותר לכולנו. הלוואי, הלוואי, שמרי על עצמך, ובאמת שיבואו ימים שפויים יותר ובריאים יותר על כולנו. תודה רבה לך. תודה רבה. The actors are out of work, but that also means the fans of these work have fewer things to us. Telenovelas are Brazil so popular, they're very famous here. They already are really popular, but now they're showing old ones that everyone has already seen. Yeah, I know what you mean. Lots of big American productions are shot here in Ontario and in British Columbia. But due to COVID-19, they've stopped. For example, there's a hugely popular show, Handmaid's Tale, an Apple TV show called C and the Hardy Boys, and they've all shut down. So we don't expect to get new episodes anytime soon either. And those are just a few of the American productions. There are also lots of Canadian shows like Big Brother Canada that were forced to shut down. And we have a lot of live theater in Toronto, which has also all been shut down. Same thing in Israel. Many movies and TV shows canceled their shoots because of the virus. So we might face a time with fewer productions being made. And let's not forget, these are the sorts of productions many of us want to work with when we graduate. So it also has an impact on career goals. So in China, single 2020 famous singing competition show has allowed its com competitors to sing and to compete at the event in their cities. So it's very interesting. And those are just some of the movies and TV shows. I had tickets to four different concerts this summer and they've all been canceled. In Canada, some people are actually trying to start a lawsuit against one of our biggest ticket sellers to try and get their money back. Here in Brazil, me and my friend Tamiris, we really wanted to go to Comic-Con, but it has been canceled. And I've lost my summer job. I work at Stratford Festival, which is Canada's version of the Shakespearean Festival. Well, despite all that, I think we have to look at the positive side. People now have more time to see movies online, read books and learn new things. And artists have more time for themselves to create. And working out is definitely one of the ways to keep busy while also staying active. Let's throw to the hosts. 
what are you guys doing to keep yourselves busy? Well, I spend a lot of time scrolling through YouTube and TikTok, and I'm seeing a lot of people being active there through different dances. And they're making a lot of dark humor and jokes about the quarantine, which I guess is another way to keep busy and keep yourself positive. Well, there's always the easy answer that is video games. But besides that, we get to experience a little tranquility since nothing is pressuring us. But that gets boring really quick. So we throw mini parties throughout the day, 15 minutes of random songs, dancing. And then when I get tired and I like to stare at the ceilings. It's relaxing. Well, here's something interesting. In China, some people have taken live streaming to another level. They are doing literally nothing on live. So let's take a look. Earning money in bed may not be as silly as it sounds. A guy who goes by the name of Yuan San attracted more than 18 million viewers on the Chinese video sharing platform Douyin in just one night simply by sharing himself sleeping. He made 70,000 yuan or more than 9,900 US dollars. I sleep at night really is only because I'm tired. But I didn't think you were more tired. I'm still 4,000 yuan. From 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Oh, that's a lot of people stuck at home across China. Live streaming has gained unprecedented popularity. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. 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 其他人做一些互动，跟网友做一些互动，可能就是这一点，所以说就让别人，就让很多人就会想进那个直播间看他睡觉。其实他的目的也不是为了看他睡觉，也是为了跟别人一起聊天。他并不是因为疫情火起来，我觉得他也不会因为疫情过去而消亡。因为有的人他可能就是，特别是现在很多在大城市，一个人比较孤单的，他可能就是想有一个人在屏幕上陪着他一起睡觉。But operators of Douyu are threatening to block stream sleeping. Like many other platforms, they say it's meaningless content. But the lockdown means live streamers like Wan Lu Kang have been unable to produce their usual content. She used to upload live sharing and cooking videos, so she too has joined the sleeping trend. 我以后不会再直播睡觉了，大不了就是回到从前。我依旧还是会很努力的去做内容，再慢慢的去涨粉，去遇真正喜欢我作品的人。And getting those followers while sleeping may be a good money spinner once the pandemic is over, when she can produce something a little more active. Wow! I wish that I could make money by just sleeping. <laughs> yeah, me too. And when we are not sleeping or in social media or taking online classes, we're all eating. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm losing weight during quarantine. You're quite lucky. I'm going the opposite route. Um, my dad and my family have been doing a lot of baking, so we've been experimenting with different breads and baked goods and that sort of thing. So I've put on a solid five pounds so far. Oh yeah, I've been eating a lot of chips when I watch TV. I just can't help having a crunchy snack while watching Netflix. <laughs> well, but I'm eating better because this social distancing. I get, I have, mo I have, I have spent so much time with my family. So. Obviously, my mom just cooks.、Um, my mom cooks delicious and nutritious foods for me every day, so it's good. Well, I'm completely different from you, Kylan.、Um, I order a lot of,、um, order a lot of food deliveries and did a lot of baking. And in Hong Kong, food delivery places are reducing their fees and delivery price. So recently, I ordered pizza, so、um, it's really, really cheap for me. It's the same thing here in Canada. One of our biggest services, Uber Eats, is offering free delivery to help reduce the cost of ordering out. In Tel Aviv, we have a food delivery service called Walt. They leave the food in front of your door, so you don't have to touch. And lately, they started to deliver markets and pharmacy supplies. We were talking earlier about actors. Well, in Israel, a group of unemployed actors have started their own food delivery service. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. In Brazil, you got an app like you pay in advance, and I had even a story of a delivery guy who was mugged for the food, not the money. Oh my gosh, that's such a shame. I hope he's、yeah. feeling better now.、Um, some restaurants that didn't used to do delivery are now doing delivery so they can stay open here in Canada. There's a place near my parents' house called Wild Wing that my family loves, and they deliver to us now. It's really great. Some local pizza places also leave the pizza box at your door and step away for you to get it. It's called contactless delivery.、Mm -hmm. 
The same sort of thing's been happening in my community. I live next to Willibald's Distillery, and every day they've been selling fresh uh, pasta and pasta sauces that they made that morning. They've also started making and selling hand sanitizer um, at, under the WHO guidelines, World Health Organization <laughs> guidelines. And then aside from all that, they've also started to do this really cool thing where they're putting Sudoku and crosswords on their beer cans just as another form of entertainment. That sounds nice. We're all figuring out from customer service workers to those staying at home, we're all finding a way to stay busy and amused. And same. <laughs> we'll end the show with some selfie videos from our classmates doing their best in this strange new world. Take a look. So I'm on day 35 of quarantine and uh, my whole family can't stop eating. So we've been keeping busy by making lots of healthy snacks for each other and I'm gonna show you one of them. Mash up one banana, spoon of peanut butter, oats, chocolate chips, cinnamon, nutmeg. Mix that up on a baking sheet. 350 for 15 minutes and delicious cookies. All right, so we just did a body combat workout for one hour. Um, we are clearly dripping in sweat and exhausted. My mom is still going out. How do you feel, Sasha? So my family and I have just settled down for our daily movie night. We've been trying to maintain at least once a day, just dedicating an hour or two to watching a film and relaxing. We like to have our ice cream and chips, sometimes coffee and a hot chocolate, and just taking it easy for an hour or two a day and just trying to de-stress. We're recording late in April and we have no idea when things will go back to normal. For Caitlin and I, this means we won't be wearing our graduation gowns until October. Jobs will be hard to come by even with our degrees. But on the bright side, we've all been brought together, even from a distance, to fight this pandemic as a worldwide team. Yes, I'm really happy to, that we are all together. And here in Brazil, for us at Metodista at least, we won't be able to film outside like we were going to do. That is something that we really wanted to do. But this quarantine has taught me to be more positive. Yeah, being positive is really important and uh, it's also important to stay healthy and, and try to do some exercise and, exercise and remember to wear your mask if you're going out. Well, it is a difficult and challenging time for everyone, but I hope you can still learn to look around and help other people through this moment. And don't forget to call the people you love and that you can't see now. And yeah, stay positive. The sole fact that this project is happening shows how strong we are and that we can get through this. And I really wish you guys the best. You too. You too. I know we will get through this and learn from our mistakes and, well, we'll enjoy even more our society as it is. So here in Hong Kong, we have a good news today. Hong Kong records no new cases of coronavirus today. And the situations are getting better in Hong Kong. I believe that we all will get through this difficult time. And oh, here in Hong Kong, we have a slogan, smile under the mask. <laughs> that's so great. And I'm so happy to hear that there's no cases right now. That's absolutely fantastic. I mean, here in Canada, I kind of feel like a sitting duck, but I have hope that we'll bounce back stronger than ever. People are resilient. And as long as we work together and take care of each other, we'll be just fine. Great, even. You've been watching The New Normal. From Brazil, Canada, Hong Kong, and Israel, thanks for joining us. I am Laura Bento with Tamiris Nascimento Carvalho in São Bernardo do Campo. I'm Clara, alongside Kalingo in Hong Kong. From Tel Aviv, I'm Nora Sidbon. And I'm Munir Khouri from Haifa. And I'm Megan Larson from Toronto. You can watch all of our shows on YouTube and Facebook. Stay safe and keep busy indoors. I'm Caitlin Krestiankova, and this has been The New Normal.